Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. Some recent news has come out, uh, leaks about the story for Suicide Squad ver or Kills the Justice League, Rocksteady's new game. Apparently, their new game within the Arkhamverse continuity. If you're a gamer, you know those uh, wonderful games, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City and Arkham Knight. <clears throat> of course, Arkham Origins, even though that's kind of a divergent timeline. And I'll explain why. But these leaks have come out and they've shown that this game is a dumpster fire. It's a train wreck top to bottom in terms of story. And Warner Brothers is vigilant. They are taking down every post they can, every video they can. If they can somehow get a copyright claim, they are just going on and on. It's one of the reasons why I'm not going to say any of the specifics because they are, it's it's really kind of amusing. It's it's adorable that Warner Brothers thinks they can silence the internet, right? But uh, but they're trying. They're trying so hard. There's so much to say about this. Warner Brothers has never, ever known what to do with their DC properties. And I mean all the way from the beginning. As soon as Warner Brothers owned DC, they never knew what to do with it. Anything good we've gotten, I mean, I'm talking from Superman the movie to Batman the anime series, anything good we've gotten has not been on purpose. It's been because their, their one MO, their method of operation, is to throw crap at the wall and see if it sticks. And every now and then, they get lucky with the right people coming in and something great happens, like Superman the movie, Batman the animated series, and so forth. But they never learn. No one, and it, it's, it's mind-boggling, because it's like a systematic problem. It's not even just the people currently in Warner Brothers, you know, executive offices just don't understand the characters. No, consistently, nobody that holds the Warner Brothers executive offices has ever understood these characters, why they are important, and, and what kind of stories are necessary for them to do their work in culture. Why we love them. They, they don't get it. So they just throw crap at the wall and see what sticks. I'm shocked, though, that everybody else is shocked about this reveal for the Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. I'm shocked for a number of reasons. First of all, because you should know Warner Brothers doesn't know what they're doing. <clears throat> you have to look at who they've gotten on certain projects. But the name already tells you that this is definitely the wrong direction to go. You don't suddenly make a game about the Suicide Squad killing the Justice League. And I know some people might have thought, well, maybe killing is just sort of, you know, killing, you know, maybe it's just sort of a, uh, they don't actually going to kill anybody. They do. They're killing people. Uh, Batman dies. Uh, Wonder Woman dies. All, all these characters, you know, the Justice League dies. And that's not even a spoiler. That's, you know, that's just, they, they literally named it that. So you can't even blame that on a leak. But Rocksteady has never been able to write. The people at Rocksteady cannot write. Now, Arkham Asylum came out amazing. The story, perfection. Arkham City came out. The story, wonderful, because Paul Dini wrote those video games. He wrote the story. They hired Paul Dini, the great Paul Dini from Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series. And he even said, I think even Bruce Timm was like a producer on Arkham Asylum game <clears throat> somehow. But, you know, they even said that, that Arkham Asylum was very much a love letter to the Batman the Animated Series fans and, and everything that made that series great. Of course, they were taking it into a more of an adult direction in terms of the subject matter that they could put in a, in a video game that they couldn't in a children's cartoon. And that didn't cross any lines, but it just meant that you could talk about like Killer Croc actually eating people and you know stuff like that you really couldn't put in the cartoon. And it was wonderful. The game was wonderful. You really did feel like you were playing the same characters. It felt like a continuation of Batman the Animated Series. It was wonderful. Arkham City came out, same thing. And, you know, Arkham City ends on very much a cliffhanger. I mean, the Joker dies. How is the, what are the implications of that? And Paul Dini has said that he had a third story in mind. But rock steady. I remember when Arkham Knight was getting ready to come out. And, you know, you're looking at reveals and, and behind the scenes footage. And I remember people were asking, hey, is Paul Dini going to come back? And the people at rock steady, like the writer for the game, just said, you know, we've been doing these games long enough. We can handle the writing. No, we can handle the writing. And I thought... How ridiculously presumptuous of you to think you can just handle the writing. You can't. You couldn't. That shows in Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight was just a mess when it came to the story. Uh, it wasn't a horrible game. The gameplay, of course, was wonderful. And there were some really cool story elements in there. You know, when you're building, when you're trying to, when somebody else comes in to try to put an end cap on a trilogy that's already been, you know, laid by somebody else in terms of the groundwork with the first and second installments... 
and especially a great writer like Paul Dini, there's already so many great pieces there to work from. But Arkham Knight just so unsatisfactorily tied that up. It was it was horrible. Okay, bring Scarecrow back. That's fine. But make it not just a random thing that he happened to come back. How is this tying together the themes of the story? Uh, Joker's blood. Um, if this Joker's blood is in you, you become the Joker. Yeah, that's a thing. Put that in the game. I mean, that could have worked if you'd explained it a little bit more. <clears throat> but again, tie together the themes. You know, make it that Batman's greatest fear has always been losing control. And when he killed the Joker, some voice inside of him says, hey, you lost control. Now, he didn't kill the Joker. He didn't kill him at all. And actually, it was just uh, Joker stabbed him before he was able to give him the cure and whatnot. But you could tell Batman's uh, being a very sane, conscious man would uh, would be tortured by that a little bit. So play up that. And then when the Scarecrow's toxin, Fear Gas, takes over, then let that be part of the elements that, that puts the Joker's voice in his mind or whatever. But no, they just wanted to bring back the Joker any way they could because Joker sells. Um, Scarecrow comes back because reasons, whatever. Um, Arkham Knight comes in because we're not going to do the Jason Todd story, guys. But yeah, we're doing the Jason Todd story. It, it was just a problem. It was a mess top to bottom. And I've said before, it was ridiculous. They had... You could tell that they didn't understand these characters. No one did any research. Somebody told them that Robin and Batgirl had a romantic relationship. They're like, okay, cool. So Robin and Batgirl, and they put Tim Drake and Barbara Gordon in a romantic relationship. No, that do a little bit more research, please, and realize that was Dick Grayson. I mean, they they, they the story to Arkham Knight was an absolute mess, and they, they just got way too big for their britches. Rocksteady thought, we can do this, and you can't. And it's becoming even more evident now that the story's leaked for the Suicide Squad game. It's absurd. It is absurd the things that they think they can get away with because we're rock steady. No, you, you built that game on the foundation of Paul Dini's story. How dare you think you can sit here and yeah, I'll just finish that story. Yeah, we can do that now. No, you can't. You couldn't. You didn't. And, and good for you that this game is leaked and it's going to be garbage. And I hope you lose a ton of money on it. Warner Brothers doesn't know what they're doing. I don't understand what the problem is. It, 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 it's truly mind-boggling to me. And it's, again, it's consistent. It's not even all the current people that were in the office. Oh, some people over here that were there. They, they just don't know. They just throw a piece of crap against the wall and see if that sticks. And they put all of, they put a lot riding on the Suicide Squad versus our Kills the Justice League game. I mean, a lot riding on that. They, they didn't let the Rocksteady do other games they thought they would like to do. So they end up with this game about these anti-heroes coming out on top in this nihilistic universe where heroes are dying and, and multiverse, multiverse, you know, timey-wimey, you know, just ridiculous. These writers can't write. And, and that's just a problem in video games in general. It, it's really hard nowadays to get a good, solid, tight story out of a video game. And it can be done. You know, I've said that the Guardians of the Galaxy game, wonderfully written. That was really great stuff. You know, of course, you get things like The Witcher and stuff like that that had been previously good people just don't think that they need writers anymore. And everybody thinks that they can be a writer. They haven't trained. They haven't studied. They don't know what it takes to write. They just know, oh, I've got an idea. I'm a writer. And and uh, the industry just rolls with that. Uh, you know, Hollywood, of course, you, just, you don't need to know how to write. You just need to have the right politics and, and the right agenda. And, and then you'll be in with them, which is blatantly obvious. You know, movies, Black Widow comes to mind, all these kind of horrible movies that come out that are just wretchedly written. Uh, because they're written more from whether it's agenda or just whatever reason, people don't think they need to hire qualified writers anymore. You know, hey, you've got these good social politics. Let's put you on this comic run. You know, like, hey, hey you, you can come in here. Uh, you know what? The programmers can just write this game. Yeah, it's fine. They've done a video games before. They can just write the story. No, writing is a specific craft. You need to know specifically and you need to have trained in this craft. It's, it's absurd that they think they can just throw this stuff at the wall and that you're going to buy it. And this is where the rubber meets the road here. Don't buy it. Don't play it. You see the story. The leaks are legit. You, you can research that on your own there. You can. It'll even come out more as the game actually comes out. You'll be able to tell that these are these are the real deal. This is the, how the story rolls. It's not okay. It's it's uh, it's unacceptable in every way. So don't buy it. I, I I get these people all the time coming on my channel. Oh man, prof. I saw the Marvels movie and it is so bad. Well. 
screw you, I don't even want to talk to you because you went and saw the Marvel's movie. The Marvel's movie, of all things that you could have known was going to be garbage from the start, I gotta go see it though, I mean, get out of here, you're not part of the solution, who cares what you thought of it? And video games are the same way. Everybody's telling me, oh man, I played Spider-Man 2 and it's so bad, you didn't know it was going to be so bad? Come on. Come on, do a little bit of research. Stop being part of the problem. Once you buy that game and play it and start you know, putting it out there, I don't care how much you want to tell me how much it sucks. You're a part of the problem. Don't do that with Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League. Everything about that, even without the story leak, should tell you this is a game to be avoided. Stop it. Stop being a mindless consumer. Rocksteady can't write. They've never been able to write. They, they, they shut away Paul Dini. They refused to call him for the third one, and it showed, and it's going to show even more with this one. You don't need to go play it just so you can know. Be in the know is really what you want to do. Stop it. Let it die. Let Warner Brothers die. Let DC die. I would rather never receive another story of my beloved DC characters ever again than have them continue to run them into the ground. <sighs> Grow a pair. Come on, people. Anyway, that's all I had to say about that. Uh, you can go other places to find the specific leaks, but I just didn't see anybody else saying, guys, what's the shocking thing? Watch that he's never been able to write. The writers the writers at their company don't know what the story is. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to satisfactorily tie up a theme. They don't understand any of that. So that's the, that's the world we live in today. Play your retro stuff, you know. I, I eventually, you know, occasionally if something slips through, great. You know, this made new, but it's 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 the exception to the rule, that's for sure. Anyway, you can stick to my channel for more of the book studies and reviews and um, analyses of the classic old stories that are good, the recommendations. I'm going to be doing some more Star Wars EU book studies coming up soon. But until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the true blue hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.